Good morning, it's Saturday, 722-2011. This is a review for Legend Quest. Yay. Episode number two. Okay, um, I know it's like three days later, but we're busy. Yeah. So, let's get to it. Alright, well, first of all, they went to uh, look for Excalibur. I mean, what more do you want? Excalibur. That's a great sword, great legend, you know. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I like the show, like that part of the episode, actually. You know what? I was actually surprised at all the shit they were finding, though. Sorry, I got to the camera. But, oh my god, the, the when they went to the um, chapel, and they found the freaking images on the wall that represented the caliber, like where it would be. And yeah. Yeah, they gave it to the Knights Templar. Yeah, well, the, they said that they gave a lot of the uh, relics and stuff like that to the Knights Templar to hold on to for safekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually shocked, man, because, like, the iconography that was there, like, you had Mary and Jesus with a sword, like, right in front of them, yeah. and then right behind Mary and Jesus, and the sword was a cave with a slanted... Um, shadowy thing on it, and they yeah. go to the cave where it was located, and they have that same thing. It's like, oh, but you know, I was actually impressed with that one. I was, I was nice. Yeah, he did a lot of really good research on that one. A lot of good field work as well. Oh yeah, he went to places where Josh wouldn't go. Yeah, <laughs> like the tiniest of places, like like the hole looked like that big on TV, and he went like Santa Claus, man. Yep. But, you know, and it was funny because he went to, I think it was Italy. Yeah, he was in Palermo. Palermo, Italy. Yeah. I uh, don't know. I can't get over his accent, though. It, it, like, I can understand it, but it's, <laughs> it just makes me laugh when I hear it. Like, no offense, but it's just funny listening to it. Yeah. Jeez, man. What else did he do there? Because I, I, I missed, like, after he was, like, three days later. Uh... Oh, let's see, he, uh, oh, he ended up going to Marne after, after he was in, uh, Italy, he went to Marne, the Marne Valley in France. Oh, yeah. To the Commandery Chapel. That's actually where he was, which had the links from Tancred's oh, palace yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah, Tancred, by the way, um, is the king that, of Italy, where the king of England, after... Uh, Lance, no, not Lancelot, um, Arthur gave it to the king, the king of England gave it to the king of Italy, which is Tancred, and so Tancred, during invasion, gave it to the Knights Templar for the safekeeping, and that's how that all happened. Yeah. So, just to rewind and fast forward on this one, so, um, you know, I was like, that's actually a smart thing, but, um, when they, when they went to France... The, one of the guys said that uh, they gave the sword to the History Museum in Britain a hundred years ago, so it was yeah. a British museum. And the story on that one, though, like how they knew it was that one, was when Excalibur was broken in half during the Lancelot versus King Arthur. Merlin welded the sword together. So when, we, when they went to the British Museum, they saw the sword, and they noticed it was welded together through the rust and grime and all that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, it's uh, quite possible that, that the, the sword that they have there in London at the museum is Excalibur. It's quite possible. Sixth century, there's a weld, you know. Yeah, cases that they're pretty much sitting on the gold mine right there, if, it, that, if that's the actual artifact. Yeah. And they and they actually followed the sword all the way from where they started to to that that spot where was, where was that? Yes, I was impressed because of last week they got stopped in yeah. two locations, but this time they got just a little bit further on this one. All right, now we go to the second episode, which was the wishing stone. Yes. Yeah, Symptomania. Symptom. Symptomani. <laughs> Symptomani stone. Um, However. Yeah, it's um, a wishing stone, it's a healer stone, it's a immortality stone if you're pure hearted. Or it, it, I guess the story goes, it fell from the sky like a meteorite and landed in what is now um, Philippines, in the Philippines. 
Well, no, actually, it actually started out with the Tibetan monk monks, oh, and then they traveled to the Philippines with it. Oh yeah, and um, that's where they think that's where they believe it is. Mm. And it's funny. It was this little city called um, what they call the city? Um, Shambhala. Oh, the Shambhala. Yeah, Shambhala. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a hidden city in the Philippines, which they almost found. But we'll get to that here in a minute. Yeah. So they go to the Philippines to uh, talk to a guide to where the cave where they thought it would have been in a cave. Yeah. And they had to go deep, deep in this cave, like in a four hour cave walk. But it was full of water because it the thing was represented with water and fire. It was weird. But they didn't find nothing though. They came close to it though. Yeah. But you know, when they got back to the entrance of the cave they found a, a strange marking on a rock or whatever. It was a coffin. Was it a coffin? It was a coffin. It was a coffin, yeah. yeah. Um, it had the gecko on it, which they represent uh Fire, fiery wind. I think they they call it. Yeah, game. they call it fire and wind. That's what the gecko stands for, not insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Asian fire. Anyway, okay. Now, you thought that was kind of a weird thing to be on a rock. Maybe they moved there during this volcanic eruption, yeah. which we didn't know about, and he didn't know about until we got to the damn cave. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay, this is going here and here and here, but it, soon it comes to the head. Um, so they gave us a story on what happened in the Philippines. A great volcanic eruption happened during the last fifth, sixth century, did they say? I can't remember. It was like what way it was. back it was in BC. It was in BC. I know that. Um, and he said that all the people that were in the volcano kind of like, moved up towards the Philippines away from the volcanic eruption and so they went to the Tala cave no Tala volcano it's right down here. I wrote it down I saw it here somewhere Tal 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 yeah Tal yeah Tal volcano Tal lake volcano yeah anyway and they took a helicopter her him and Kinga oh she's so cool in the helicopter, they noticed, like, because in the picture that they had was ring, inside of a ring, inside of a ring, and then that square block. Yeah. And on the outside of the, okay, uh, the volcano was the ocean. Yep. An island. Yep. And another island. And then a squared out section. So they landed in the lake area, and they took a boat, and they were doing sonar. They're going along, Just they didn't smart. find nothing. Yeah, that was very smart, actually. I was like, oh, you're going to find shit in the water. So they did it, and they noticed a little hump. Yep. Like this, and like that. So, of course, you got to do a dive. Absolutely. So, what happened then, man? Well, he, he, went to, he went diving or whatever, and visibility started getting really, really bad. And he really didn't find nothing while he was down there. But he saw... What he saw was a sheer cliff looking thing and it was all kind of squared out like a could be a building or something like that but he didn't he couldn't say what it was it was just so covered with all the seaweed and everything like that that was in there you know so kinga ended up you know calling him back up yeah after a while she lost transmission yeah she did lose transmission yeah. twice now in two episodes she's lost transmission with casey because casey has to be a stubborn little jackass and go further out of communication range and worry Kinga. Yep. I wonder if that's about Kinga and Casey. I, 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 I've been trying to like think like, well, no, they're field researchers, but lately it's just been like, no. Yeah, she seems to worry a little bit too much about them. I, think I don't know. I don't, I don't think they're married. I don't see anything on this finger. No. no. But anyway, anyway, when he got back up to the surface, whatever, they just figured that they couldn't find it, and the secret of the Samanti Stone is going to have to be hidden mm, for a the, long time. Yeah, because there's, you know, there was just no way to see down there in the water, and sonar can only, you know, show you so much. Yeah, no, it, it was like it was like really, really dark. You said like you had like ten feet of visibility. At the at the end of the dive, it was only like four feet actually. Yeah, because yeah. like all I see is seaweed just go straight up. Yeah, you know? and I'm like, oh my god. Okay, you remember the episode of Destination Truth when they go in to go look for that um, 
I was like, I don't know if it was the mer no, it wasn't the mermaid. It was like some sort of sea creature out in Turkey. Okay, I remember and like that. how dark that was. That's what that water looked like. It was that murky. Yeah. But I was just like, oh my god. I don't know. But he gets he gets close every time. He does. He he does really good. I, I really enjoy watching the show. I watch you know, like watching him and Tangy, you know, going through the field and everything. Um, so one out of ten. I'm gonna have to give the show another eight and a half tonight. Eight and a half? I'd give it I'd give it an eight and a half. Good solid eight and a half this time. Yeah. Mostly because, you know, there was parts in there where I was just like, I'm lost. I got so lost somewhere, I'm like, ah. Uh -huh. yeah, kind of bounced around a little bit. Mm -hmm. The only one episode was the first episode where it just stayed on track. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's like, hey, there's that. That's connected to that. That's connected to that. This one, he's like, oh, yeah, that was supposed to be with that. And that was supposed to be with there. And I got lost. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'll just sit here and wait. And yeah. Basically. Well, that's, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes when you're hunting for, you know. The truth. The truth, yeah. I think it should be called Truth Quest. <laughs> Could be. Intent Josh Gates. <laughs> By the way, speaking of Josh Gates, I looked up that radio website. They're not airing any numbers until they have something to air about. Right. So I have them on my friends list. I friended Gabriel. Open it on Facebook. Yes, you can do that. By the way, on Facebook, if you type in their name, it'll you say that. It. Don't be discouraged when it says, "Do you personally know this person?" Just click yes, and they'll add you because that's just stupid. So, I mean, it happened to us. So. Yeah. I just say, yes, I know this person. Because it's TV. <laughs> Alright, guys. If I was going to grade this from an A to an F, I'd give it a B. B? It's all a B plus, maybe. B yeah. plus. I'd go B plus. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was actually a little bit better. Yeah. And there's much more to come next week. Oh, my God. What are they looking for again next week? Oh, yeah. The piercing... Thing that the one that oh the Jesus. yeah the oh, the, uh, the spear spear um, what is it called the spear of something or other I don't know but it's a, it's the spear that pierced Christ's chest after he was all mortified yeah oh that's supposed to have mystical powers as well right yeah if you I don't know if you like like poke yourself with it because it has the blood of Christ on it you're like pure and immortal I'm gonna look it up. Who knows? Who Next knows? week we'll conjure on it, or I'll just do it on my show and say, "Hey, this is what I found out." Right. So, all right. So last night we did a test run. Me and Adrian did a test run on how we would do a topical episode with him over the phone. It wasn't too bad. It was just a test run, though. Okay, cool. I, I had uploaded, it, but you know, it was just like you know, it was kind of like spur of the moment. So we're like, okay, let's just try it. We'll do that. Okay, we'll keep we'll keep pushing forward on it then. Did it go yes. well? It went very well. Went well, all yeah, right. He, he said usually when he does interviews like that over the phone, it he it, it just kind of rambles on. But this time it just like it went off without a hitch. So I'm like, awesome. Okay, cool. cool. So we'll be looking for more of those because we're going to be covering topics, uh, very important topics, not yeah. just you know shows and UFOs and all that fun stuff, but it's about day to day stuff that's causing problems in America across the world. You name it, we're going to give our opinion on it, and we're going to have other opinions on it, too. So we're looking for those videos. Yes. All right, guys. Take it from us, because we all got to get ready for work. Yep. I have an hour and a half. He's got five minutes. <laughs> all right, guys. Peace. Peace.